In a world where one woman tries to start a podcast. How will I ever do this on my own? She thought she would have to get expensive equipment. What? I can do all of this on a free app? She thought she would have to find creation tools all over the internet. You mean it can all be contained in an app on my phone and computer? She thought she would have to do all her own distribution. You mean to tell me this app is going to send it to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and all those other platforms for me? She thought she would never make any money. I don't have to wait for a minimum listenership to monetize? She thought that she would have to find all kinds of different equipment and pieces. But I'm going to download this free Anchor app and get started today. Visit anchor.fm and download the free Anchor app. To be just like her, the ultimate podcaster. Hello and welcome to the Lou Review. Today we are talking to the owners and operators of the Lucky Leopard. And I met them to have some pizza, but they can do a whole lot more than that. And we're going to hear their story and what they've got going on now. So I've got uh, Igor... Goryashkin. Goryashkin. I got nervous. Oh, you're and good. I messed it up. You're good. Oh, I did. No, I you know, you didn't. You're good. We can carry oh, on. Well. We're good. And then Ricky. Equals the most important part. We carry also on. have Ricky Williams. Hey, guys. <laughs> and um, so tell us what makes Lucky Leopard unique in the Louisville food scene. Uh, you want to take us? Yeah, I'll take it. Um, so I think what makes us unique are a few things. Um, well, all right, let's, let's preface with this. Uh, we started as a Neapolitan pizza concept uh, early on in COVID, uh, doing pop-ups out of uh, Old Louisville. Mm-hmm. Um, that has kind of grown into this very unique, um, hard-to-define concept, I think, in the two years since um, the original concept was began in Old Louisville. Mm-hmm. Um, now we still do the Neapolitan style pizzas and that's kind of always going to be the center, the heart of the business. And what makes a pizza Neapolitan style? So it's the original pizza. So all pizza originates from Naples in Italy. Mm-hmm. Um, and any other pizza that you're familiar with, so whether it's Sicilian, deep dish, New York style, they're all derived from the granddaddy of them all, which is Neapolitan pizza. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, what makes Neapolitan pizza so special is that, so it's a very, very thin base but it's a nice fluffy uh, crust with a nice chew to it. Um, but what it, what really exemplifies it is freshness. Mm-hmm. So a lot of pizza that you're used to eating, um, the cheese will be processed or it'll be low moisture. It will mm-hmm. be cooked down, you know, kind of cooked down tomato sauces. Mm-hmm. Um, Neapolitan pizza, the entire reason what makes it special is that it's all freshness Mm -hmm. so it's freshly crushed uh tomatoes freshly made mozzarella um fresh basil on there um olive oil so it's it's almost like a health food and and what's more remarkable is is that it cooks in a minute and (laughs) to a minute and 30 seconds really mm -hmm. so uh, it's cooked to so of all the pizzas in the world it cooks at the highest temperature Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people traditionally cook in, cook it in wood fired oven, but that's not necessary, mm-hmm. as we've proven. Mm-hmm. But yeah, what makes it a really special product is the fact that you cook it at 900 degrees and the pizza's ready in no more than a minute and a half. Oh my gosh! And Talk it's... about fast food. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the, it was the original fast food. Whoa! It was the original fast food. In fact, what a lot of people don't realize is the first mention of pizza was like 900 AD. Uh, it was really? in church documents in Italy. It was mentioned as a <laughs> uh, as a payment between several priests. Uh, right. That form of payment was several pizza. Uh-huh. And Were they helping their friend move? Maybe. Because <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's the last form of payment. They were moving castles. They were moving castles. And paying people in pizza in uh-huh. 900 AD. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nothing, nothing changes. Okay, nothing changes. now that's some priceless <laughs> trivia right there. Mm-hmm. The, but, uh, but yeah, no, I think uh, kind of touching on what Ricky said, I think what makes uh, what makes our concept special is the fact that we're very confident in our product. We do think that it's um up there if not at the top in terms of the best pizza in town Mm -hmm. and we offer people the chance to enjoy that product until 2 Mm a.m so we're open later than anyone else and we we'd like to think that we provide a product that is 
a delicious as any other food that you might be able to find. Never yeah. mind it. Never mind at two a.m. So. Yeah, right. Nobody's <laughs> expecting that yeah. much freshness at two a.m. <laughs> yeah, or, or midnight on a Sunday for them. Oh, yeah, or right? midnight on a Sunday because everything closes earlier mm-hmm. on Sundays. Yeah, that's or doesn't even open sometimes. So it's, it's so yeah. True. So yeah, I would say for both kinds of things, just touch on it, but yeah. Yeah, and so you started. Is it Lucky Leopard Pizza? In Lucky the, Leopard Pizza in the name, and but you've expanded to other things to like various, sandwiches. Yeah. yeah. Various other avenues, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so Naples in Italy is obviously the home of pizza, but in like 1980, uh, some old fella had this idea of uh, taking some pizza dough, mm-hmm. flattening it out, and then cooking it as a sandwich bread. Yeah. And when Ricky and I first met, we decided, oh, wouldn't it be kind of cool to bake bread to order every single time someone wanted a sandwich? And in Italy, it's called panuzzo. Wouldn't it be cool? Yeah. In, yeah. And, um, and yeah, so we... The other half our menu is selling sandwiches where we cook bread to order every single time. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we've also added a few other <clears throat> um, somewhat niche items since then. We had to do the pita with the same, using the same dough for our hummus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We now do beignets using the yes. same dough. So yep. everything kind of comes back to the dough. Mm-hmm. That was the original passion for this project, mm-hmm. and everything um, kind of leads back to that for us. Uh, it's also the basis for the name of our company, Lucky Leopard Pizza, yeah. because the reaction with the dough and the open flame creates kind of this leopard spotting. Mm-hmm. And it's also kind of cute that the mm-hmm. pizza cooks so quick. Uh, like I leopard, think that's very you know. cute. I think yeah. that fast is very cute. No. We're fans of alliteration uh, as well. So. Yes. Well, got to have that alliteration. You have to have alliteration. I do love that. High horse bar, lucky leopard pizza. Right. Mm-hmm. Not to be super basic, but my daughter and I are really into leopard print right now. So you this pizza is so on brand for our style. There you go. Yes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so you're very on trend. Nice. In so many ways. Um, so how did you two meet? We met very randomly. Uh, I was, I think I was, I don't even remember if I was between jobs at this point. I think maybe I was, maybe I wasn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, uh, the chef in town, uh, Patrick Roney. Yeah. Patrick Roney, uh, who was then head chef at Ashbourne Farms, mm-hmm. um, messaged me and said, Hey, do you want to come and just kind of cook in the kitchen for an evening? I was like, yeah, sure. I need the money. Mm-hmm. And I pulled into the parking lot and I'd never been there before. And as I pulled in. Ricky over here pulls in at the same time and I just simply asked him, mm-hmm. hey, could you just, is that the way to the back door or wherever? I didn't know where I was going. Mm-hmm. Is that the way? And we just kind of ended up talking re- the rest of the night because our only duty that night was to cook the staff meal, oh. to cook family dinner. Oh. So we just spent ages just chopping onions and braising, uh, yeah, and, 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 and we, beef we and helped stuff. with some, some yeah. plating and things yeah, like yeah. that. But we got a chance to kind of talk and we kind of just yeah. realized that we... Um, had similar interests and kind of passions with regards to food. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so we we just kind of started hanging out on a friendly basis, nice. and then as COVID kicked off, oh yeah, was that's that right what... before COVID? Yeah, that yeah. was before about a year before COVID. Yeah. Oh, okay, so you um, had an established friendship before COVID. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I had been a regular out at Ashbourne Farms at the time. I was out there okay. helping with various events. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for onwards of a year plus at that time, mm-hmm. and it was Igor's first time. And so, um, like he said, I was able to, I kind of already knew what was going on. Mm-hmm. Them being there for their first time, it was like very kind of like, uh, like a lost puppy dog ish, I guess I'm saying. And we have so, still a chance. Yeah. Like, yes. we, it's Complete so funny that we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have, uh, we wouldn't just be sat here. I don't yeah. think if we hadn't pulled, pulled into a parking lot at the same time. Isn't that funny? You would have chosen somebody else to talk to. Or not, or, or not. a skulled in the corner. Who knows? Yeah. I don't know. Like I haven't spoken to anybody. I'm not going to start now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, that's not my mo ever. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> There's a complete convergence yeah. of like fate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So did you decide you wanted to go in business together before COVID? Uh, that's hard to say. So I think there was a lot of like flirting with the idea, mm-hmm. but neither of us really. He was wholly entertained it. You know he I mean? was looking to do something, so yeah. he had a couple of business ideas beforehand mm-hmm. that were food centered. Okay. Um, which the details of which I didn't even necessarily know about right. when we kind of got talking about it. He, mm-hmm. Ricky, still ho- hopefully will execute this at some point with mm-hmm. a kind of a pop restaurant concept with a mm-hmm. um, field mouse. But mm-hmm. the um, what it was basically as COVID kicked off. Like everyone else, 
I'd started watching videos about baking and I got onto this kick of just watching endless amounts of videos about Neapolitan pizza. Oh. Because I've been lucky enough to have visited Naples twice. Mm -hmm. So I had a frame of reference. Whereas so you had experienced yeah, it. Yeah, I've, I've been to Italy. I'm look, to as you might it. sound, I, I'm from, as it might, you might be able to you know, ascertain, I'm from Europe. So mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to travel you know, there. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky enough to have been to Naples several times went to Italy, throughout Italy. So getting a chance to taste that kind of food and still remember it 10, 12, 13, 14, 15 years later, mm -hmm. um, it was just really interesting to start studying something that I knew how it should taste and how it looked. And yeah. we just got talking about it. And then we just did some back of like the back of like a, you know, notepad calculation and realized, mm -hmm. wait, this is actually a decent business idea. And if we can kind of figure out how to do it, because mm -hmm. pizza's cheap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even even pizza that requires fresh and you know kind of top notch ingredients, mm -hmm. it's still relatively affordable. And we decided to kind of just do it. Yay! But through many many kind of like you know days of kind of self questioning or whatever, but mm -hmm. we kind of took the leap. And after, you started with like your first pop up. Where was that? First one was in Igor's backyard. Oh, yeah. With your neighbors? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I needed to make some money. Got I, some taste I testers? Well, because yeah. I served tables, so I was out of work. Yeah. Oh, because so th this is during COVID. I was also during out of work, yeah. Oh, okay. Is yeah. this in, like, March of 2020, April? Time like is, that? Time is barely a construct during COVID. Maybe. That is fair. That yeah. is I don't fair. remember where the last three years have gone, so I you know. could tell them, I don't maybe, <laughs> around that, maybe, yes. yeah. March, April, who knows. But it was during, not before. It was during. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was during, yeah, yeah, for we, sure. We became friends before, and then uh -huh. during is yeah, when we yeah. kind of decided. We're like, it's time, because we got to do something. Yeah, it yeah. made sense. It was a thing I, you could do. I was always back of house, he was always front of the house, yeah. so there's okay. that balance there already. Both yes. passionate about food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, both have a lot of free time on our hands, and it just yeah. seemed like the time to bet on yourself, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did um, you have a lemonade stand next to your pizza stand? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a diversify <laughs> product. But it's uh, interesting. But we, I, I think we, the way we started out was we would just make like three or four dough balls and just cook them in the backyard uh -huh. mm -hmm. with the uni oven. This old like uni oven that I had. Uni and, oven? What's yeah. That? So, uh, so uni is a company who makes small pizza ovens okay and there's another one gosney and uh, we make rock box but a lot of people who are into kind of this kind of food uh -huh. know these ovens and they're do they heat up to 900 degrees yeah. like you're talking about yeah gosh that yeah. sounds intense but it's fun because you can do it at home sure. the thing is the whole point the product is designed for people to do it at home yeah yeah, yeah. but a lot of people decided to be kind of you know take it professionally and then we discovered that we could do that so we got a bunch of them in the kitchen yeah so just little portable ovens that do it that's awesome yep and then we got we were lucky enough to meet we this is how far this is how deep down a rabbit hole ricky and i have gotten <laughs> since we started the business we went to the pizza expo which is a whole world. So it's an entire <laughs> expo in Las Vegas. Yeah. In Vegas. It's in Vegas, dedicated entirely <laughs> to <laughs> pizza. So like, it's kind of like we're sat in your basement right now looking at Dungeons oh, and Dragons. It's the biggest so it's like, yes. nerds there's I've nerds, yes. and then there's just D&D &D nerds. Yes. Yeah. So there's cooks, and um, then there's pizza people. Yes. Yeah. So it's yes. this crazy, like for example, we saw pizza acrobatics, uh -huh. where people are what? doing, they will, toss dough oh, yeah. to music and dance routines okay. so they'll dance and do spl the splits and like do mm. backflips rip and while juggling it's like it's like chip and juggling jails, kind of. several oh, pizza like it pizzas in their hand up in the air they'll toss it into the crowd <laughs> it's madness yeah. it's madness that so we, we, we did that yeah yeah so we did that and how long looking. is it was it like just three days like yeah like yeah, three yeah, days not yeah i love stuff like that i know That's amazing yeah, yeah so i highly encourage anyone if they get a chance go to vegas during the pizza expo mm -hmm. wow. it's a bunch of free food that's the best reason to go Tons to vegas in yeah, my yeah. opinion oh wow yeah you can live off of pizza for those three days easily um yeah. my husband will be like sign me up now yep. he loves pizza you guys walked in and my son was like did you bring pizza and I know. I know. You I laugh. You're a perceptive like child. Right. You laugh, but like that's one of three foods he eats. So it wasn't even specific to you. I was I like, if you happen to. Person. I know. No. Like, I'm sorry. Actually, I come up no. yeah, yeah. To be fair, like. I just come of goodwill. Yeah. <laughs> his daddy brings some pizza. Like, I don't know why he said that. But anyway. Yeah, you guys are the pizza people. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
see, I was going to ask you, you started this endeavor. What do you wish you had known before you started it? Can I just say, before you yeah. do that, though, uh -huh. one thing we never mentioned was we didn't even plan on being a high horse. You didn't. We could always no. have a food truck. Mm -hmm. And we a have truck? a truck. You do We have, have a truck. It's just not finished yet. Oh, okay. We started with a goal of having a truck. Oh. And we ended up at a high horse for... Okay. A variety of reasons, mm -hmm. but as now, which will now answer the question that you're about to ask. It will. So we will soon have a truck. Give okay. it, give us a couple of months. We'll have a truck, okay. and we'll still be at high horse. Mm -hmm. I guess I can give you a couple of months. I've given you this long. But so. in terms of answering that question, yeah, what, what do we wish we knew? Yeah. You can expect. I would say you can expect. I'll let you take one as well. But I would say, from my point of view, is you can expect. An ungodly amount of hours in, of work before you start it, mm -hmm. and you can triple that when you actually start doing it. Mm. You cannot switch off. You That's... cannot switch off mm -hmm. at any waking moment of a day. You sleep. You go to sleep thinking about the business. You dream about the business. You wake up thinking about the business. Mm -hmm. And all you do is live and breathe and eat the business and not because you're a workaholic and, or whatever no, because, but because no, you have no it, choice you that's have to be. how you have to be to function you have to be for mm -hmm. it to survive yeah right that's yeah right. Mm -hmm. yeah it's like a child that needs to be fed right. and fought about all the time and right yeah, it's, so. yeah. yeah. It, it certainly takes a toll and i think if i could go back uh, and tell myself something it would be to take care of my mental health mm -hmm. because it does any business not just ours specifically be, mm -hmm. but because it's also a very late night business mm -hmm. in a very kind of i don't want to say hostile environment but mm -hmm. energetic and it's a very energetic environment with bar people and yeah. drunk people yeah. you get djs and like it's yeah. so, it's like a you know like we're essentially serving Top quality product out of a nightclub. Mm -hmm. Half literally, the time. no, that's literally yeah. Half the time, and then the other half of the yeah. time, it's like we're serving yeah. top notch, you know, top quality products out of like a you know an old western dive bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a saloon. It's, it's a weird, mm -hmm. it's, it's a, like a weird saloon dichotomy. nightclub. Mm -hmm. You bizarre. have different demographics depending on like depending who's on playing the night. It really or does. whatever. Yeah, Thursdays and Sundays they're... are different to Fridays and Saturdays. Yeah, yeah it's insane. Yeah. Um, and and so like it's so easy to just kind of get into this habit of this ritual of doing nothing when the the little bit of time you do have to yourself doing nothing at all and just kind of like letting the business become your life mm -hmm. completely mm -hmm. and and wholly and mm -hmm. that is just not conducive to a good state of mental health yeah. and i think that's a lesson to be learned for any business owner mm -hmm. there's no matter it doesn't matter if you do this or not mm -hmm. i'm sure any business owner out there will go yeah you have to know you have to know when to switch off. Mm -hmm. You have to switch off. You, you have, have to, to teach otherwise, yourself. Yeah, and, and look, honestly, look for signs of burnout. I yeah. would say do, look for signs of burnout. Mm -hmm. Learn to take a break. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you don't care about the business. In fact, I would say you care more about the business if you do take a break. Because mm -hmm. then you can actually be your best version of yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After you've recharged and recuperated. Caring and, about yourself is caring yeah. about the business. Yeah. The, the two go hand in hand. And I would say that's a massive lesson that I think so, we learn. On the one hand, you have to do all the work and be available and mm -hmm. answer the call of duty mm -hmm. in order to make your livelihood mm -hmm. be sustainable. Correct. But you sound like you've discovered what you need to do to preserve your mental health. So what has it been for each of you? Mm, I'm, I'd say we're both kind of still discovering it. Okay. Yeah. Um, it sounds like you're definitely working on that together. But the awareness is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's just kind of... I don't know. I think it's different for both of us. You know, yeah. I think Igor goes golfing and does I, things. Like I that. have to go and do something on Monday. So Monday I'll play golf no matter what. And I walk mm -hmm. and I okay. walk. I don't get in the car. Like I played this morning at 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. I get up. It doesn't matter how little I slept. I get up. Mm -hmm. It's a chance for me to switch off. I don't yeah. have my phone. don't have anything. Just that's my time. Yeah. So I do that. And I'll play with a buddy of mine. Be awake and conscious, but mentally. And you don't think about anything off. except the golf. It's a very present. Mm -hmm. It's a very present activity. Just simple, but I'm assuming same, you know, kind of same experience of people who, you know, want to do exercise or yoga or whatever. He's just very mm -hmm. present. Yeah. Ricky, I'm, I'm sure he has other stuff. He, yeah, you exercise I, and you I work actually, stuff. well, <laughs> I used to exercise a lot more before the business. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that has kind of taken a, a back seat. We were thinner in a well. way, I know. I know. <laughs> before you kept making all this cheap pizza. Mm -hmm. well, it's just like. <laughs> Affordable pizza. Eating your, eat your own supply. Yeah, no. eating your own no. supply. What I'll do is I'll, you know, I do actually um, 
I have started practicing yoga with my girlfriend mm -hmm. uh, in my in my free time, and I it's important for my mental health, but also just to my intrinsic being mm -hmm. who I am to you know travel when I can, and that's not just mm -hmm. like a weekend getaway, which is nice, mm -hmm. but you know like taking a week, you know, two weeks if you can, to explore somewhere new because not only are you taking care of yourself at that point but you're expanding your view view of the world and as mm -hmm. you know as a chef that is imperative to growing as in in, in your field you yeah. know what i'm saying you experience different cultures you experience different food mm -hmm. you experience different presentations and ways of doing things because you know when we go out we like to enjoy ourselves mm -hmm. we go out and so many people go to the same place every time, get the same food, because mm -hmm. it's a comfort thing. Okay. Sure. But I really appreciate what you're describing, because that's kind of what this whole food blogging thing is for me. Sure. Because in experiencing something new, like you're saying, you get to be present with that experience. Like when you're playing golf and you hit the ball in a new direction, it's not the same any two times. So you have yeah. to be present in the moment. So, yeah, I definitely value that because when I was feeling signs of burnout myself as a nurse it was a lot of what you were talking about this like routine um yeah. where every nothing seemed special everything seemed monotonous and I was like am I even alive right now yeah. I don't feel yeah. like I am Being I was just during COVID, numb. Can you imagine? I was not a I was not a bedside nurse during COVID okay I was a bedside nurse in the ICU before COVID and I was burned out and I now call people uh, so you. that is I, I love my nursing job now um but you can everybody had burnout before covid mm -hmm. <laughs> just now people know about it yeah. um but yeah that numbness that you get when you're burnt out and that lack of enjoyment in anything yeah. is just so devastating so also i think i think to a certain degree when you talked about how you enjoy kind of going out to eat <clears throat> we'll try like ricky will try and travel and we'll we'll both try and travel but at least the goal is to make food that allows other people to travel yeah because mm -hmm. if you can push people out of their comfort zone and allow them to eat something then they can at least experience something new as well mm -hmm. that came from somewhere else it came from somewhere else yeah or, or was inspired by somewhere yeah else, exactly whatever, yeah you know right. what i'm saying right. so at least I think that's something that's kind of important because mm -hmm. if we can do it, you know, and transport ourselves just from, ex you know, kind of exploring our own kind of passions when it comes to food, mm -hmm. I think everyone should kind of do that, you know? Yeah. Give that a chance. And, mm -hmm. and that can be part of the journey of mm -hmm. finding new things that excite you. Yeah. You, God, there's nothing worse than a routine. You're tired by, <laughs> but you're yeah. tired by yeah. your job and you're tired but uh -huh. because you you don't think of the new things to do to entertain mm -hmm. yourself outside of a job yeah and then you get in, that's when you get in a rut that you talk about and that's what kind of has inspired me as of late to keep going you know and get out of the monotony of just doing the same menu over and over and over again oh yeah did you say yeah. you did something special for lunch yeah we did a whole like series of things that was way out of what our original concept mm -hmm. was our original concept was kind of very eurocentric very mm -hmm. pizza focused which it still mm -hmm. is you yeah. know what i'm saying sure but um, it was gonna be the core of our business yeah yeah, yeah. but we've yeah. also now expanded because you know before this concept I've, I've you know i've been a cook for the past decade plus mm -hmm. and i've just recently in the past couple of years i think grown into i don't know feeling comfortable calling myself a chef okay yeah and so we've been taking that original concept with mm -hmm. the panuzzo bread with the pizzas and stuff like that and kind of expanding especially in the panuzzo realm mm -hmm. to different things like uh from the american south or from the iberian peninsula mm -hmm. or just yeah. different you know what i'm saying different yeah. things like that like for instance we did a during lent a fried catfish with a tomatillo chow chow fresco mm -hmm. that has nothing nice. to do with europe at all yeah. that is a yummy, very though. southern inspired thing but mm -hmm. what kind of ties it back to that eurocentric origin again is the, the dough that we use there you and go. the bread that we fired to make the dough yeah you know and throughout land we ran fish specials every week whether it was mm -hmm. the yeah. red curry shrimp or the kind of like um uh, right, the spanish the, style the shrimp spanish yeah. style shrimp taco and, garlic mm -hmm. and stuff like that fried catfish you know we did like different yeah. things from kind of taking 
um, technique and and tradition from different parts of the the U.S., from Europe, from even from Mexico, mm-hmm. you know, um, and and I think that ultimately is what makes us wholly unique. Mm-hmm. The pizza yeah. concept and the pizza concept is a very niche thing, mm-hmm. but there of course are other people in the city doing Neapolitan style pizza. Yeah. What makes us what sets us apart from them is our I think especially recently branching out mm-hmm. to kind of like bring a completely different product to people and not limit what it, yourself to one locality or, exactly but to see what you can incorporate from different areas Based on into our something collective new, experiences and where we've been yeah. you know i think yeah. the, the irony is, is that our product is on paper really simple we make dough mm-hmm. balls we spread them out <laughs> and then we put stuff on top mm-hmm. but that blank canvas allows us to paint any kind of picture that we want Mm-hmm. Correct. It used to be Italian yeah, and European pictures, but now it can be anything. Mm-hmm. But by canvas is the same. By canvas is an Italian, you know, the dough. Mm-hmm. So. And it's yeah. gonna be yummy. Yeah, hopefully. It'll be hard to mess that up. I've had no. it sweet and savory so far, and they were both great. Mm-hmm. Have you, you had the beignets yet? I did. Yeah. You did awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, I think you those, had the those... Zeppelin, right? No, yeah, you had the Zeppelin. Yeah, yeah. But these are new. We now got beignets. You had the big donuts little or the round ones? Oh, they were little. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. So now we've got beignets. And we have beignets, oh and they are out of the pizza world. dough. Okay, I have to come back. Um, yeah, but also, to. that red curry shrimp sounded really good. <laughs> it was insane. Um, oh. So, just I'll touch on that very quickly, but uh-huh. uh, my mentor, um, for the past three, four years, um, was Korean. Mm-hmm. So it was oh. very fun for me to kind of be able to branch out and do my own Asian-inspired dish. Yeah. Um, kind of based on that um time with him mm-hmm. so that was that was actually very special to me i enjoyed doing that yeah did he like him uh he, he runs a very esteemed kitchen in the city now oh, and okay. he very he rarely busy. had and he has a daughter and like mm. yeah he very rarely has time to make it out our way but uh I I'm talked sure to him about he would be yeah proud. conceptually <laughs> conceptually he approved there you go conceptually he approved well good that sounds great all right. Well, thank you so much for taking the yeah. time to share with me about your business and your origin story. Yeah. And people can follow you on Instagram at Lucky Love Lucky Pizza. Pizza. Mm-hmm. And uh, you have a Facebook page as well. I and mean, you take orders online, correct? We do. Correct. Mm-hmm. Go to our website, click yeah. the link. You can order it through Square, Square App. Mm-hmm. Good deal. Well, I can't wait to see what you come up yeah. with next. So, um, subscribe to the Lou Review for notifications of our next episode, and we'll see you in the next one.